Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Please like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy today's episode. The next day, Qin Ming received the brilliant message at 8 o'clock in the morning of Earth Standard Time. A complete work list was sent to the computer of the Iron Mine. Although the list listed a very detailed page of work tasks, Chen Ming took a rough look and found that it was generally very simple and clear. On the first day of formal work, Chen Ming only needed to familiarize himself with the factory environment, the factory equipment, and the future work process. Although Chen Ming mainly relied on spiritual power to work, the premise of tasks such as transformation still required Chen Ming to spend time learning transformation technology, and learning required the use of these equipment. So what should be familiar should be familiar, and it will definitely be useful in the future. After today, Chun Ming's real work will begin. Basically, he works in the morning and gives Chen Ming time to learn technology in the afternoon, which seems to be quite easy. In addition, the list also states that Chen Ming will be given some material subsidies for learning and practicing the learned technology. However, Yu Hui will also regularly check the technology mastered by Chen Ming. If it does not pass, the supply of materials will be reduced accordingly. This treatment is really like the company's treatment of employees, which makes it difficult for Chen Ming not to have a sense of deja vu. However, Chen Ming did not care too much. After continuing to look at the work location on the work list, it was inside the three factories outside. He put on the protective clothing, closed the protective panels of the spacecraft's portholes, and prepared to set off. However, just after the protective panels of the spacecraft were completely lowered, Chen Ming suddenly found that the factory outside had undergone very obvious changes. The transformation of the robots and mechanical equipment in various parts of the factory yesterday has been completed. Some semi-open factories are now fully closed, and the three factories that were originally independent of each other have now built fast lanes in different factory rooms. It will definitely be very convenient to move between each other. Chun Ming could not see the other transformations, and he had to understand them in detail after entering. Chin Ming sorted out his protective clothing and also took Xiao Shi, who had not appeared for a long time, and walked off the spacecraft. He had already roughly understood the situation of the three factories yesterday. They are the production factories of weapons, ships, and fuel. This was originally a small supply point for Yu Hui. After Chen Ming came, it was isolated from other places and used as a workplace for Chen Ming. While providing Chen Ming with a better working environment, it can also prevent Chen Ming from taking the opportunity to go to nearby factories to cause trouble. Chen Ming came to the factory in the center of the three factories. At this time, its main door was closed. However, there was a small door next to it. It was a separate compartment. After entering the compartment, the door behind Chen Ming closed. Originally, there was nothing in the ears except some slight vibrations, but suddenly I heard the sound of the equipment in the factory running. The air was being replenished inside the compartment. Chen Ming looked down at the gas quality detector of the protective suit, which showed three lines of content. Habitable air environment. No lethal gas. No pathogenic microorganisms. On a planet without an atmosphere and belonging to the afterglow that does not require breathing. Such an environment can be said to be quite good for people. Is this the purpose of the factory's transformation yesterday? The other two factories were also closed, and there should be similar transformations. Yu Hui is really… Chun Ming sighed a little. He didn't get such treatment when he first joined the company. Chun Ming shook his head, tried to take off his helmet, and breathed the air in the factory. Although inside the factory, the air didn't smell strange. At most, it had a heavy metallic smell, but this was inevitable in the factory, and Chen Ming couldn't be too demanding. Holding the helmet to his side, Xiao Shi pulled the edge of the helmet and looked at the new environment outside curiously, looking eager to try. And Chen Ming picked up the terminal and looked at the factory map sent along with the work list. The location of the factory control room can be seen on the map. Three factories share one control room. But Chen Ming didn't go there immediately because he saw another thing. Refrigerated food storage. This thing can be said to be quite incompatible with Yu Hui. Anyway, today's task is to familiarize yourself with the working environment and work process. The cold storage is in the factory and should be considered part of the working environment. Chen Ming followed the passage that had been left after the renovation and arrived at the cold storage smoothly. 
He stood at the door of the cold storage. It was different from the empty shelves that Chen Ming saw when he opened the cold storage of the mining space station half a year ago. After the cold storage of the factory was opened, Chen Ming saw a large amount of food supplies that almost filled all the shelves of the cold storage. If Chen Ming remembered correctly, there was no habitable planet in the galaxy where he was currently. In other words, if you want food, you have to transport it from other places. Yuhui really gave Chen Ming a very good working environment. Chen Ming closed the door of the cold storage and continued to look at the map. The structures of the other two factories are basically the same as the spaceship factory where Chen Ming is now, except for the lack of cold storage and the main control room. And some differences in the internal equipment, the general structure is similar. Chen Ming wandered around the other two factories and returned to the spaceship factory after confirming the environment. Came to the factory's main control room. This is a room with complex control panels on one side and various work equipment on the other side, and even some items for Chen Ming to rest in the corner. Chen Ming didn't pay attention to the side, but went straight to the control panel. Then he found that although the panels looked complicated and headache, in fact, these panels themselves and their functions were very familiar to Chen Ming. It was basically the same as the equipment in the maintenance plant, and although it was equipment modified by Yu Hui, most of the operating habits were based on humans. Chen Ming tried to operate it. Through the control panel, he can observe all situations including the other two factories. All control permissions of the three factories are also integrated here, and all equipment can be controlled by Chen Ming. In addition, in the database linked to the control panel, Chen Ming also saw a specially marked, complete and more detailed task arrangement of Chen Ming, that is, more detailed task requirements. And tomorrow morning's work is to repair a batch of weapons that have been stored in the warehouse. Although Chen Ming controls the factory and can use the factory's equipment to complete it, Yu Hui obviously does not want to see Chen Ming use the equipment to repair, but wants to see how Chen Ming's spiritual power will achieve the effect of control maintenance and transformation. These equipment in the factory are more used for learning as Chen Ming thought before. Yu Hui specially gave Chen Ming time to study in the afternoon and even entered some professional books on Yuhui technology in the database linked to the control panel, not just to put them there without reading. Chen Ming flipped through these books that Yuhui entered here. It can only be said that although the design of Yuhui's spacecraft and weapons is the same as that of humans in terms of the underlying thinking, after all, Yuhui is a human. But the situation is different when it extends to other places. Yu Hui's spaceship design ideas and weapon design ideas are all aimed at AI being able to use them. What Chun Ming needs to learn is the technology in this area. In fact, humans should also have these contents. After so many years of fighting, Yu Hui's spaceship must have obtained a lot of them. Reverse cracking, some superficial and relatively basic knowledge that should be mastered must have been mastered. Yu Hui must know this, and he will definitely give it to you without any regrets. So these relatively low-level knowledge should not be too difficult for Chen Ming to learn. After getting familiar with all the functions of the control panel, Chen Ming chose to go to the material warehouse next to the factory work area. The first batch of weapons to be repaired tomorrow is here. Most of these weapons are energy weapons, and there are also a small number of live ammunition weapons. Many of them are models that Chen Ming has never seen. It's a pity that these things are not on the spaceship now, so he can't know their names. But since they are all in the warehouse, there will always be a chance to figure out the value of these things later. In addition to weapons, there are some other things, such as drone parts or some broken equipment. It seems that as long as it is not something that Yu Hui AI directly touches, they picked some of it and brought it to Chen Ming. In addition to these finished products, there are many other materials in the warehouse. These should be the material subsidies that Yu Hui mentioned, and they can all be used by him. Chen Ming took a casual look and confirmed that there were 13 kinds of high-grade materials and two kinds of special-grade materials in the warehouse. Although the quantity is not large, it is enough for Chen Ming to use for a while if it is not used carelessly. In addition, there are those escape capsules that Chen Ming specially asked Chu Guang to collect before leaving the battlefield. Just when Chen Ming was thinking about how to deal with these escape capsules, Chen Ming suddenly felt that his spaceship staying in the space station was touched. Chen Ming immediately distracted himself and saw that it was Lao Wu who was scratching the engine of the spaceship with a screwdriver. Tisk! 
Chen Ming smacked his lips in dissatisfaction. It seems that Lao Wu already knew that he was not dead. Then, through the active contact method that Chen Ming had left for his boss, he could just use something hard to scratch the inside of the engine nozzle of the spacecraft to contact Chen Ming. After all, Chen Ming was now with Yu Hui, and he didn't need to control the spacecraft for protection even for safety, so he could always control the Sentinel and receive information from the Sentinel at any time. After Lao Wu finished scratching the spaceship, he turned around and ran to an empty corner of the repair shop, lit a cigarette, and waited. Chun Ming didn't waste any words and immediately contacted him through the sentry. You have nothing to do and scratch my spaceship? Pay me. Lao Wu smiled and said, Hey, Xiao Ming, you are still alive. What is your specific situation? What happened next? Tell me quickly. Fix my spaceship. Hey, I will definitely. Chen Ming leaned against the wall of the factory and told Lao Wu what happened after the follower company fleet entered hyperspace. Of course, leaving out a lot of details. After listening to the question, Old Wu showed a confused look on his face and said, There is nothing wrong with what you said before, but the latter part sounds weird. Why did Yu Hui agree to let you join so easily and give you such good treatment? He didn't even interrogate you to find out what you were doing in the past. Chen Ming was quite surprised to hear Old Wu's question and asked, Don't you understand? I feel like I understand but I also feel like I don't understand. Tell me, I'm too lazy to think about it. The person involved is calling me. Why should I think about it myself? You really are? Chen Ming shook his head, but did not refuse, explaining, because I didn't show any resistance before, nor did I show any threat to them. So they let me join? Question mark. Simply put, my ability actually forced Yu Hui to come over to a certain extent. I just ask you, you are Yu Hui, I ask you for help, if you have the ability to come, will you at least come over to take a look? Isn't this nonsense? That's it? If Yu Hui comes, they can only make two choices, one is to kill me to eliminate future troubles, and the other is to take me away and let me, who has asked for help, work for them. With my active cooperation, is it necessary for Yu Hui to interrogate me more? I am actively cooperating with them, and they are cooperating with me. Isn't it best to cooperate like this? There is no need to make a complicated, troublesome interrogation that is impossible to get a real answer. You just sounded simple, but many everything is a combination of luck, coincidence, and the information I got from other places. You don't think Yu Hui is easy to get along with, do you? If we really have a falling out, Yu Hui will definitely kill me first. If I am peaceful, Yu Hui will cooperate with me and give me peace. If I resist, Yu Hui will definitely be aggressive. Qin Ming paused for a moment and continued, Yu Hui AI is actually very easy to understand. Even if they have self-awareness, they will still follow the logical optimal solution when doing things. I may not necessarily judge the optimal solution, but the relatively optimal solution can still be calculated. The optimal solution they can find for me is definitely not to kill me. So in that situation, I made the choice to cooperate with their optimal solution. Doing things is the general idea of understanding each other and the same interests, then everything will be very smooth. They are the risks they must bear, and they know that I have risks. And my own thoughts are also risks. I may not only join them because of the military relationship. Oral threats are forbidden to have thoughts on them. If you have ideas, you will be threatened or something. You are you hui, you say so, and then I say I dare not have thoughts on you. In the future, I will work honestly for you. Do you believe it? Lao Wu shook his head and said, Don't believe it. Yes, even if they did, I would not necessarily have no idea. On the contrary, it might even arouse my rebellious psychology. And if this matter is really told, the result is that my relationship with Yu Hui will be very strained. I am already in Yu Hui's territory. Is it good for Yu Hui to have a strained relationship with him? Old Wu suddenly said, Why do I feel that you said the opposite? No, Yu Hui and I are now cooperating. I provide Yu Hui with my abilities, and Yu Hui provides me with a shelter from the military. In addition to Yu Hui, there are many other forces that can protect me from being hunted down by the military, but without me, there will be no other psychic with such abilities. Chun Ming suddenly sighed when he said this, 
Actually, if the company could have been half an hour faster, I should be in the capital of the star region now. And if I'm not mistaken, the military should be in trouble soon. It's hard for the military to continue to spare energy to hunt me down. It's a pity that it's still a little slow. Old Wu seemed to agree and said, Indeed, but the company should find a way to save you later, right? It will definitely save you. As long as the company needs Sky Steel and the subsequent benefits of Sky Steel, they will definitely keep trying to save me before their losses exceed the estimated risk value brought to them by the benefits of Sky Steel. As for the rescue, what will happen is a matter for the future. Anyway, it would be a bit difficult for my company to come to rescue now, so I am not in a hurry to go back. It would be nice for you, Hui, to stay here and get some benefits from each other steadily. After hearing this, Old Wu couldn't help but ask, Are you so confident? Yu Hui gets benefits from you, and you can still take advantage of Yu Hui when you are with him? Aren't you afraid that they will mess with you directly when they get anxious? Well, it sounds a bit confident, but I know the thinking logic of Yu Hui's AI very well. Instead of using unnecessary threats and discriminatory treatment to target me, they can only use death threats and other means to force me to work at a very low efficiency and at the same time face the covetousness of all forces interested in me. I should be enough for other forces to have ideas about me, right? Old Wu sounded more confident than Qin Ming and said, That's for sure. What happened to you in the fleet has spread everywhere. Soon, people in many places will know that there is a psychic who can control spacecraft. So, so many people will have ideas about me. Yu Hui is a threat, but if I really die, Yu Hui's loss will definitely be the greatest. Because I am in their hands now, not on human territory. If I die on human territory, it will be acceptable to Yu Hui. After all, I will be dangerous to Yu Hui there. What they can't get, it's not bad to destroy it. But if I die on Yu Hui's territory, Yu Hui will get nothing. Yu Hui's possibility of relying on my ability to make technological progress and gain a stronger future is gone. Yu Hui and I both know this. So if we can deal with things peacefully without conflict, then both sides can get what they need. There is no need to make trouble, right? Old Wu now completely understands why Chun Ming was able to join Yu Hui so smoothly. He sighed and said, Is Yu Hui so smart? If Yu Hui is not smart, we would not have fought with Yu Hui for so long. I'm talking about being smart in terms of being a human. I thought Yu Hui was just a robot that could only calculate. Old Wu said this, and Chen Ming didn't find it strange to have such an idea. After all, Yu Hui generally does not communicate with humans, so in the eyes of most people, he should be the image of a crazy artificial intelligence. Unless someone is able to communicate with Yu Hui, they will know that Yu Hui is really a new life. So you know now, right? So for Yu Hui, instead of all kinds of threats, restrictions, and coercion, it is better to use more gentle means, more active support, and generous treatment to keep me here. You know, old Wu, Yu Hui gave me the control of three factories, a spacecraft production factory, a weapons production factory, and a ship fuel production factory. To be honest, I am very tempted now. All the internal authority of the factory is given to me, and all the materials are at my disposal. Even if I can't make money from them, my own spacecraft can also be used. And more importantly, Chun Ming's tone was pulled here, and suddenly he changed the subject and said, Old Wu, go to my spacecraft. Okay. Old Wu pinched out the cigarette, flicked the cigarette but in the direction of the sweeping robot next to him, and walked into the maintenance plant. Chun Ming controlled the sentinel hatch to open and let Old Wu get on board. Then, Chen Ming randomly selected a conspicuous device inside the Sentinel and modified it. Chen Ming was standing in the warehouse at this time. Part of the materials in the warehouse in front of him melted into liquid instantly and flowed into Chen Ming's palm. After crossing the distance limit, it covered the equipment of the Sentinel. In the amazed eyes of Old Wu, Chen Ming chose to restore the transformation. Then, the transformed materials appeared on the floor of the sentinel in the original place. It's meaningless to separate the distance of who knows how many light years in front of me. Do you know the value of transmitting things from Yuhui over a long distance? Although I can't modify Yuhui's AI core now, I will definitely be able to install and disassemble them in the future. 
Do you understand the meaning? If you were allowed to come, would you be tempted? Old Wu swallowed his saliva. There were three complete factories in front of them, and if he didn't have Qin Ming's ability, he would have to think about it carefully. After all, everything actually belonged to Yu Hui. However, with Qin Ming's hand, working in the factory was definitely not working for Yu Hui. Yu Hui will provide me with many materials, including ordinary, advanced, and even special materials. They will also give me knowledge to learn Yu Hui's technology. What I can get from Yu Hui is definitely more than the ordinary materials I put in front of you now. Do you think they can think of it? A psychic who controls a spaceship has the ability similar to space teleportation. Old Wu bent down and picked up a metal ingot on the ground and said, I can't think of it. That's it. Anyway, to sum up this matter, Yu Hui and I can both benefit from each other. Although there are risks, the risks are acceptable. So there is no need for us to tear each other apart openly. I am willing to cooperate, and Yu Hui is also willing to cooperate. Both sides get what they need, and it depends on who can be the winner in the end. Old Wu raised his head and took a look at the surveillance inside the spaceship. He knew Chun Ming could see it. I always feel that you and Yu Hui have an inexplicable tacit understanding. It may be because I have a lot of contact with Yu Hui AI. Well, I have things to do here, so I'm hanging up. After getting the answer, Old Wu said without further ado, Okay, when can you come back? I think Old Lu seems to be very unhappy these two days. I feel a little better knowing that you are still alive, but I feel that I am not very energetic. Qin Ming knew the reason why the factory manager was not energetic. After all, he and his boss were doing a business of tens of millions a day. But in fact, after Chen Ming's identity was exposed, this matter was not easy to do. The company would be on guard against such business that would damage the company's reputation. Even if the pirate space station was doing it, it had to cooperate with the outside companies, so it would definitely be stopped. Chen Ming himself might not be able to come to the space station often in the future. It would be strange if the factory manager was not depressed. It was a pity for Chen Ming. He only did two or three days of work before and did not make much money. The factory manager would probably transfer the remaining money in two days. However, Chen Ming couldn't see it because there was no internet, so he could only go back and talk about it. Then you can go to the factory director to have a drink and have fun. If you have any questions, contact me again. That's all. Chen Ming hung up the call. For a moment, his face showed a comfortable feeling of saying everything in his heart but it was immediately covered by some haze. Chen Ming actually had something to say just now. Although he acted normal, in fact, he still had some uncertainty about the future. And these uncertainties made him always hang on his breath and couldn't let go completely. Because although Chen Ming really didn't want to go back now, if he wanted to go back, Chen Ming currently had no good way to go back immediately, unless through other people. He was forced to call Yu Hui because he was in a desperate situation and Yu Hui was a way he prepared in advance to survive when no one could save him. It was a backup plan that would be activated only when it was most necessary. Therefore, Chun Ming did not prepare a backup plan for the backup plan. So his current situation was actually a bit difficult to get off. In addition to gaining benefits from Yu Hui, he also needs to continue to find ways to escape. But now Chun Ming doesn't want to trust others anymore. He doesn't want to wait for others to be late. He must find a way to leave by himself. It's not necessary, but it must be there. Chen Ming took a long breath, pushed the wall behind him, and stood firm. At this time, a communication was sent in and sent to Chen Ming's terminal. Why do I feel that more people have contacted him after running to Yu Hui? A strange thought flashed through Chen Ming's mind, and he found that the terminal showed active communication from Gamma A. It said that it had almost reached the upper limit of the Gamma Level Yu Hui AI core and could be upgraded to Beta Level. For this purpose, the core carrier needs to be replaced. Gamma A is about to become a Beta Level AI core. Chen Ming knew about this before. But Gamma A also said that it was still a little short of substantial improvement. During this period, apart from the three mechanical chips that Chen Ming gave it, which were almost useless, there was nothing that could make Gamma A improve so quickly. The only possibility is that Yu Hui arranged it, 
and Yu Hui gave Gamma A the computing power required to meet the conditions for improvement. As for whether this is the case, it will be a matter of investigation. Chen Ming opened the panel of Chu Guang, and then he found that Chu Guang was staying outside a factory in the Yuhui Industrial Colony. And it was also the same independent small supply point as Chen Ming, an independent small factory. Although Chu Guang stopped here, Gamma A had been removed from Chu Guang at this time. However, Chen Ming was still able to determine the location of Gamma A. It was inside the factory next to it. The core should be replaced. It seems that the sudden improvement of Gamma A was indeed Yu Hui's initiative. They still don't believe that Chen Ming has no ability to control the AI core, so they decided to replace the core of Gamma A, which is suspected of being controlled by Chen Ming. This is the best choice that cannot be faulted from a rational and logical point of view, and Chen Ming cannot comment on it. Otherwise, it is equivalent to helping Yu Hui thoroughly prove that he has this ability. But even if Gamma A has to change its carrier, Chun Ming is still confident that his psychic power will continue. Because his panel shows AI individual controlled, not AI core controlled. Yu Hui does not distinguish according to the core, but according to the existence in the core. I just don't know whether Yu Hui will reinstall Gamma A back to the refraction after replacing Gamma A, or will try to give Gamma A a new spaceship. Chun Ming doesn't think that Yu Hui will relax his vigilance against Gamma A just because of the replacement of the shell and there may be other temptations later. It seems that it will take time for Gamma A to replace the Beta Class Core. Chun Ming didn't wait all the time, and there are other things to do at the moment. Deal with those military escape pods. Chen Ming walked into the warehouse and used the control panel in the warehouse to control the equipment connecting the work area and the warehouse, as well as some robots with various functions. He transported the escape pod in the warehouse to the next door and began to remove the outer layer he had added with the panel before. The cryo-hibernation device has been activated inside the escape pod, and it will remain frozen unless it is activated from the outside. So Chen Ming is not worried that the soldiers inside will take the opportunity to escape after the outer shell is removed. After a busy period of time, Chen Ming found the escape pod carrying the soldier in special military uniform among these escape pods. At the same time, Chen Ming also saw the eagle mark on his chest and the through the transparent porthole of the escape pod. Before, when Chen Ming's terminal network was not disconnected inside the hyperspace, he took the opportunity to check it. This mark is the mark of the 14th Independent Empire Legion. Chen Ming was once just an ordinary maintenance technician, and at most he knew that the military had many different departments. From the highest star field joint war zone military, to the next star field military, to the star region military, and to the lowest and most scattered star system garrisons. In addition, the empire has some independent legions outside this system. Apart from this, Chun Ming is not very clear. He only found out after checking that the 14th legion is currently recognized as the strongest of the 20 independent legions in the empire. It is no wonder that the battles commanded by the commander of the 14th Legion can limit Chen Ming's ability everywhere. The 14th Legion has the largest exclusive territory among all independent legions. Although it is smaller in area than the Starfield Joint Warzone military, the Starfield military, and the Star Region military, the income of all colonies within the galaxy is equivalent to the military expenditure of the Legion. As a result, the combat capability of the 14th Legion is often stronger than that of some war zone militaries. And according to what Chen Ming found out, the 14th Legion was actually quite weak before. It was after a reorganization about 20 years ago, and after many battles with Yu Hui on the front battlefield, that it reached its current heyday. I don't know why the people from the 14th Legion suddenly came here. Through the transparent porthole of the escape pod, Chen Ming could see not only the military uniform, but also a face of a man about the same age as Chen Ming, and the military badge hanging on his chest. The commander's name was Cheng Xingha, and his rank was only captain. Looking at Cheng Xingha with his eyes closed in the escape pod, Chen Ming's face was a little hesitant. In fact, he didn't have much hatred for the military, especially the 14th Legion from outside. After all, it was normal for soldiers to obey orders. There is a perpetrator for every wrong, and for Chen Ming, the only people who have hatred are the military high-ranking officials who issued the order to track down Chen Ming, 
and those who are in cahoots with the high-ranking officials and would rather kill Chen Ming for Sky Steel. Of course, there is also the psychic who blocked the boss rescue. And Chen Ming has no intention of killing these captives or avenging those who died in the previous battle. Doing so is completely useless to Chen Ming, and he can only say that he is not familiar with the people in the company. Thirty years have passed, and the people he used to know have either retired or died. There is no one familiar. And to be honest, Chen Ming used to have only ordinary colleagues with other people, and it is hard to say whether they are familiar or not. Now, let alone those who have only known each other for a few hours on the cattle drive. The company gave them the order, and the company will naturally take care of their affairs, and Chun Ming does not need to worry about it. If Chin Ming becomes rich in the future and feels sorry, he can find a way to compensate, but now Chin Ming himself is a little bit vulnerable, so he still puts himself first. So instead of thinking about these, it is better to think about whether there is any way to use these captives. However, Chun Ming has not yet figured out how to use these captives. Although there is a simplest and crude way, throw them to Yu Hui. They will naturally take these escape pods to the human government military to exchange for something. Yu Hui will definitely give Chun Ming some benefits. But Chun Ming doesn't think it's a good idea. It feels like the value of these captives is wasted in vain. And Chun Ming actually has some other ideas about Cheng Xingha. The military fleet's previous strong combat power that far exceeds the paper power has not yet faded in Chen Ming's heart. Chen Ming never thought that the fleet could make such a delicate and exquisite operation that requires Chen Ming's orders. Just relying on the command skills of the battle can exert the strength that can completely offset the advantages brought by Chen Ming. This gives Chen Ming the feeling. As long as the company's command is exchanged with Chang Xingha, even if the company's fleet strength is reduced by one-third, with Chun Ming's ability, the army can still be defeated. And it just so happens that Chin Ming now wants to organize a fleet of his own. Then if Chang Xingha can be the commander of the fleet, if Chin Ming can persuade Chang Xingha to join his fleet, that will definitely have a very terrifying effect. Although Chen Ming thinks this probability is not high, there is always a dream. And the current commander's environment also makes Chun Ming's thoughts in his heart linger for a long time. Chang Xingha has now lost his ship, his fleet, and has been captured by Chen Ming. He is alone, which is simply the most vulnerable time in his life. Even if he cannot join Chun Ming's fleet to take command, Chen Ming can also try to use his freedom in exchange for him to teach Chun Ming, or teach Gamma AB some command skills. Chen Ming is thinking about flexible skills on the battlefield, not rigid text knowledge. He believes that Cheng Xingha can do this. Even if only so much can be achieved in the end, it is of great value to Chen Ming. As long as the commander Cheng Xingha can be dealt with, it is actually equivalent to dealing with the rest of the army. The remaining 62 people, even if they are different from Cheng Xingha, are also of considerable value. Chen Ming reached out and patted the escape pod, feeling a little impatient. But he also knew that things were not done that way, and what he had just thought of had to be postponed. His fleet had no hair at all, and waking up Cheng Xingha now would not be of any benefit to Chen Ming. It must be discussed later. I just don't know if the military will come to find them during this period of time. Chen Ming was not too worried about this, anyway, there was Yu Hui blocking outside, and this was also the risk that Yu Hui wanted Chen Ming to take. After removing the outer shells that Chen Ming had added to all the escape pods, Chen Ming also spent some time recording the identity of each person's military card. By the way, a piece of paper recording the identity was posted outside each escape pod for easy reference later. After finishing this matter, there was still a lot of time left today, and Chen Ming still planned to use it for study. After the official work assigned by Yu Hui was completed tomorrow, Chen Ming would try to ask Yu Hui for some other things. Chen Ming and Yu Hui now have an awkward cooperative relationship. Since Chen Ming made some reasonable requests, Yu Hui couldn't refuse without reason. At the same time, company headquarters. It had been quite a while since Chen Ming was taken away by Yu Hui. Chen Ming left the space station at around 3 in the morning, and after a lot of things he arrived at the Yu Hui colony. It was already morning of that day, and the last meeting was about this time, a little earlier. One day later, the directors who had been busy for more than 20 hours gathered in the meeting room again. At the beginning of the meeting, everyone looked at the director who was handling military affairs. The director spread his hands and said, 
Well, as you already know, the problem on the military side has exploded, and the Gamma, two-star zone has been completely taken over by the 14th Army. Is the 14th Army really here? And take over in person? It seems that the person who was killed by their own people before has some status. It may also be that they are protecting their shortcomings. This should be good news for us, right? The director in charge of military affairs looked at the last director who asked a question and said, but dash. They immediately issued a wanted notice for Chen Ming, saying that Chen Ming secretly communicated with Yu Hui and betrayed the empire. The previous bounty of 90 million was increased to 200 million again. I specifically asked them about the Lin the person in charge at the time seemed to be a temporary recruit from the local military who was fine in the 14th Corps. He was not familiar with many things. They didn't say what the wanted order was about. The answer was ambiguous. They just said they were busy and there was no rush to deal with such things. Let's wait. I don't understand what they mean. The director next to him guessed. Could it be that Chen Ming's psychic power has been discovered by the military? So decisive? Don't leave any way for others. It should be that the surviving military personnel saw the Yuhui ship taking Chen Ming away. And there were residual energy fluctuations of Yuhui's tachyon spear at the scene. And they would know that it was Yuhui who killed the ruler. This cannot be concealed. And the news that Chen Ming is a psychic should have leaked out. He was previously hunted by the military fleet and it is impossible for him to hide the ability he has already exerted. Then it is normal to think that Chen Ming can control the afterglow. The key is not whether the connection can be made, but other things. The director in charge of the military affairs suddenly made a stop gesture and said, wait a minute, there is one more thing. The wanted notice they issued is at the star zone level, not the star field level, and is only valid within the star zone. The meeting room suddenly fell silent for a while until a famous director asked, Why is this? Wanted, but not completely wanted. The 14th Legion, what do you mean? Whatever it means, the situation is fine. The star-level bounty doesn't matter at all. A star-level bounty is always just a star-level bounty. It doesn't matter if there is no star-level wanted order. You can't say it doesn't matter. Chin Ming has a star-level wanted order on him, and the government will definitely find out when the time comes. And Chen Ming was really taken away by Yu Hui. What will the government do? Did he have a secret relationship with Yu Hui? Or will he be regarded as a prisoner of Yu Hui? If there is a problem, just find a way to solve it. Our relationship with Chen Ming's star level government is not too bad now. Just let us know about this kind of thing. The directors quickly discussed it and determined their opinions on how this matter might develop and also brought up the next topic. In that case, the sky steel issue should be dealt with. How is the communication with the government going? Yes, we have the mining rights certificate and the evidence of Chen Ming's departure from the galaxy. What does the government say? The director who took the initiative to contact the government said expressionlessly, when I asked, the government told us about Chen Ming and sky steel. Which one do you want to listen to first? Chen Ming or sky steel? Chen Ming. Seeing that the other directors had no objections, the director in charge of contacting the government said, The government has confirmed Chen Ming's situation based on the information we have given, and they are very interested in Chen Ming. As long as there is accurate information about Chen Ming, the government said that it can forgive the past incident of the armor piercing class, and will make up for the damaged armor piercing class later, and it can also give us priority bidding rights and more ship orders in the future. I remember that the armor-piercing class was recovered by us, right? How to deal with it? Chun Ming's ability has not been fully understood yet. Even if the armor-breaker is destroyed, he may still be able to control it. The chairman, who had been silent but just listening, suddenly said, When the armor-breaker passed the bid, it had already started production, right? A director sitting in the corner nodded and said, Yes, but there has been no new output except for the sample. Then concentrate the productivity on one line and find an armor breaker to deal with it first. As for this armor breaker, repair it first. If Chen Ming can come back, give him the ship directly. This armor breaker can serve as proof of our friendship with him and reduce the conflict when we sell it to him later. No one except him can touch the ship that has been touched by him. If he can't come back, there are two situations. If he dies, there is no need to worry about the problem of this armor breaker. 
If he is not dead, we can only take it first and see how Qin Ming is in the future. We have confirmed that the military and the government are aware of Qin Ming's abilities. They have more things to consider than us, and they will definitely not let Qin Ming continue to stay with Yu Hui. They didn't have to spend energy to find those ordinary technicians who went to Yu Hui before, but Qin Ming, a psychic, is different. The military will definitely take action later, and we don't need to keep this armor-piercing ship for too long. But, the chairman suddenly said very seriously, have you thought about the problem? Things have come to this point, which means that no matter what, the military and the government will definitely help us clean up our mess in order to prevent Yu Hui from becoming stronger. But if we don't take the initiative to clean up, then our mess is likely to be lost, not to mention other things. If Qin Ming falls into the hands of the military or the government, whether Qin Ming is a member of the company or whether he ran away from the mining space station will not be up to us. After looking around the conference table and making sure that everyone understood what he said, the chairman changed the subject first, giving the people working on it time to think, what about Sky Steel? What does the government say? The director in charge of the government said, the government said that this matter and Qin Ming's matter should be considered separately. The government can at most help us communicate with the military and ask them to lift the blockade of the galaxy. But the military should be tortured by the 14th Legion now, right? The director in charge of military affairs next to him said, Torture is torture. Only the general command of the Star Region military is now paralyzed, and other places are still the same. When I communicated with them before, they just replaced a group of internal people with clean people, so the military leaders who can contact the government are basically in the same situation. As long as Qin Ming can be brought back first, the government can directly arrange a meeting for us with the military people left there, which means that the government is on our side. However, the chairman asked at this time, then what about Chen Ming? The conference room fell into silence again. Our company has never lost a technician or an afterglow core before. I didn't expect that this first case was a psychic. What can we do? If the military hadn't been causing trouble, we would have brought the person back long ago. It's not like they can really blame us. Is there any other way to find Chin Ming? The director in charge of the pirate space station suddenly said, Actually, I have an idea. The military is now in a state of panic. I think we can bypass all the twists and turns and try to enter RM, too directly. Chen Ming was able to get out alive before. So can we. As long as we confirm that there is no danger, the opening of the galaxy is also a foregone conclusion and the mining rights can return to us. His proposal was immediately rejected by other directors. It's too easy to give people a reason to criticize this, and we can't catch the military's problems. Chen Ming was on the space station 30 years ago, and he can definitely recover what we lost in the past 30 years. Without this handle, what should we do with the sky steel we lost? The director of the pirate space station asked back, Do you think these sky steels can be recovered? Sky Steel is definitely related to the interests of a lot of people. We can still recover one or two people, but I can only say that it's wishful thinking if there are more people. But at least we can recover some of it, and the less loss the better. Do you have the information Chen Ming gave us before? The data we secretly verified can confirm that the number of sky fish in the galaxy is about 70. If Chen Ming comes back alone, it will be enough to offset the Sky Steel production for five years, right? Five years, 1,800 days, 70 sky fishes sky steel. What do you say? The director in charge of the pirate space station was silent. The director also interrupted the topic at this time and said, I think it is better to go from Chan Ming. We can't rush into RM-2, which is now at least nominally blocked by the military. This galaxy is likely to be taken over by the 14th Legion in the future. The 14th Legion is not so easy to get along with and their attitude is not clear yet. They issued a wanted notice for Chan Ming, but it is only a star zone wanted notice. It may be a warning to us to wait until they integrate the military. We can't handle the star zone joint war zone in this marginal star zone, let alone the 14th Legion. Don't offend them. A director who agreed with the director of the pirate space station suddenly said, but we can't handle the military of a star zone under the war zone. Isn't it more difficult for the 14th Legion which is in its heyday, to completely take over the galaxy? 
The chairman responded, that can't be said. It can be seen from the sky steel that we are not facing the star zone military, but the people at the higher level. Do you think they might give up these sky steels? If we choose to get the sky steel back in a way that obviously violates the rules, do you believe that even the government may not recognize it? We can only achieve our goal in the most legal way through Chan Ming. We need to bring him back before the military and the government take action. Otherwise, we may not even get the sky steel. As soon as the chairman finished speaking, someone asked, how to save them? Those afterglow AIs we have would rather be destroyed and hidden than reveal the details of the afterglow star domain. Unless we can crack the core of the afterglow AI and control them 100%, we can't expect anything at all. Chun Ming seems to be able to control it. Then find another Chun Ming. The chairman knocked on the table to stop the quarrel that was about to break out. But one director suddenly said, in fact, if we withdraw now, the loss is not too big. Is the value of Qin Ming really enough for us to continue to invest? The chairman frowned and said, Have you forgotten that there is sky steel? And this matter is actually an opportunity for us. Even if we take Qin Ming back, we can announce that Chun Ming is dead and hide him completely. We no longer need to distribute Chen Ming's own value, and we can use it 100%. The director just now still said somewhat disagreeably, but if this fails, the loss will be greater. The company has never failed in business. This loss is at most a skin break for the company, but if Chun Ming can be taken back, his ability can bring us endless benefits. The director who proposed to use the company's products that are still being tested yesterday asked uncertainly, you mean, use that thing? The chairman paused, nodded slowly and said, start applying to the government in advance, he the previous performance was to save resources and let us solve Chan Ming's affairs. Then we took Chan Ming away from us, which was much easier for them to take Chen Ming. Do you use this thing to vote? Chairman, do you still refuse to call yesterday? They went. We couldn't get anything. And calling this kind of thing was not for myself. You did not oppose it yesterday, nor did he initiate a vote. And he must also hold the mentality of yesterday. A minute later, the chairman looked at the projection screen in front of him. Seven votes in favor, four against, two abstentions, passed. A director who voted in favor immediately said, it's passed, but how should we find Chen Ming? The chairman said with a plan in mind, yesterday, an employee Chen Ming knew got on his civilian sentinel at the pirate space station. The door opened automatically, and this scene was deliberately not avoided from surveillance. Chen Ming is still alive and even living well with Yu Hui. But he didn't contact us. But we can contact him. He must have some purpose for not contacting us when he went to Yu Hui. We will give him what he needs. Unless what he wants exceeds the benefits of mining sky steel, Chun Ming has never acted stupid, right? We have collected a lot of Yu Hui's things over the years. I don't believe we don't have what he needs. Find a way to contact Chen Ming through the relationship of the space station and find out his location. Prepare for the other side first. Prepare to launch our main battleship, Conqueror. Just when the Cinda company was ready to call the main battleship that was still under experiment to find Chen Ming. Chen Ming, who was in the Yuhui industrial colony, was still studying Yuhui's technology. Relying on his experience and the technology he had mastered, he quickly and efficiently understood the design logic of Yu Hui's ships. Chen Ming could clearly feel that the professional books Yu Hui gave him were specially considered. These books were basically additional knowledge gradually added to the very basic common technology of humans and Yu Hui. Moreover, Chen Ming flipped through each book before he officially started reading. He could feel that the knowledge belonging to different books was gradually increasing in difficulty, but the overall was contained in a large framework. It felt to him like the book that Yu Hui gave to their own individuals, which was quite outrageous. However, when Chen Ming thought that Yu Hui didn't mean that he could learn it back just by stuffing the content of the book into the core database, and they also needed to learn, he felt that things didn't seem to be so wrong. So Chen Ming picked two books that he felt should be the easiest and closely related to read. One is Basic Compatibility and Compatibility Conditions of Radiation Energy System and Energy Weapons, and the other is Radiation Energy Conduction Tutorial for Ship Radiation Energy System. The contents of the books are very basic, 
and they talk about how to make good use of the solid space when there is a lot of extra space available inside the ship of Yuhui. After spending some time, Chun Ming successfully digested the contents of the two books and also learned some standardized techniques. In terms of the panel, one extended radiation energy coil and one radiation energy distribution device. Chen Ming wanted to try it right away, but he temporarily restrained this idea. Decided to write these things down first to see if there would be other valuable modifications to the spacecraft in the book he was going to read later. The iron ore is now his best test product, and after these technologies are verified, they can all be modified on Chen Ming's future spacecraft. Before continuing to read the next professional book, Chen Ming put down the terminal first. It is still necessary to combine work and rest. In the past, Chen Ming would go out hunting or do something else in between his studies every night on Reimu to relax while working. Now it is not easy for him to go out on Yuhui's planet, but selective relaxation is always necessary. As Chen Ming put down the terminal, he also took a look at the time. It is now 9.30 in the morning. This time, Chen Ming was a little surprised. He remembered that he had just finished visiting three factories at 8.30. In other words, he only spent an hour to finish reading two relatively basic books, and he did not read them superficially, but read them thoroughly to master the techniques and content in the books. Chin Ming himself did not realize that his current learning efficiency was a bit exaggerated. It was simply that he understood it thoroughly after reading it from beginning to end. The process of reading is the process of learning. Chun Ming stretched out his hand and pressed his temple in disbelief and closed his eyes. He hadn't noticed it before, but now that he found that his learning ability was a bit exaggerated, he suddenly realized the changes in him. Chen Ming could clearly feel that his brain's thinking flexibility had increased, and it was more than just a little bit higher. This might also be a passive effect of psychic power. This is a good thing. Chun Ming opened his eyes again. The faster he learned, the less time Chin Ming needed to spend on these aspects, and he would have more time to do other things. It was just that when Chen Ming put down the terminal just now, he thought a long time had passed. But since it was only a short time, he chose to continue to pick up the terminal. He wanted to try to finish reading all the dozen e-books that Yu Hui gave him today. It was now 9.30 in the morning, and I read until 10 o'clock in the evening. If I could keep this efficiency after reading for 12 and a half hours, it should be about right. But Chun Ming couldn't really keep his concentration for 12 hours. So when he was reading and his thoughts began to get tangled and needed to be sorted out, Chen Ming would relax temporarily, change his mind, and think about other things. For example, what he was going to do now and in the future. Chen Ming now had three main goals. The first was to get benefits from Yu Hui. The second is to find a way to prepare a stable escape route from Yu Hui. And the third is to prepare his own fleet. There is actually a most convenient and even the shortest way to achieve these three goals. Confirm who is responsible for Yuhui's galaxy, find it, and control it. In this way, the galaxy may be directly in Chen Ming's hands, not to mention the fleet. However, the difficulty should be a bit high, not to mention whether it can be found or not, and whether there is a chance to touch it. Chen Ming can only control the spacecraft now. The premise of controlling the Afterglow AI is to remove the core and install it on the spacecraft. Break through the various defenses of the Afterglow, remove the Afterglow individuals that control the galaxy, and then install them on any of Chen Ming's ships. This difficulty can only be imagined. However, Chen Ming is not sure whether his control over the Afterglow AI is what he is doing now. Because the Gamma AB on his panel are listed separately on a panel, instead of requiring Chen Ming to open the panel of the refraction or fighter modification to find them. Maybe if Chen Ming has a chance to touch the Afterglow AI core, he can directly control it? Before Chen Ming really touches an Afterglow core that he has not controlled, no one can say for sure. After all, Chen Ming did not expect that his ability to control the spacecraft can also control the AI core, and even continue to control it after the core is removed from the spacecraft. Since it is displayed separately on the panel, Chun Ming's idea cannot be completely denied. This requires Chun Ming to try it himself. As for the opportunity to try, he can only find a way to get it. The difficulty of directly contacting the Afterglow AI that controls the galaxy is a bit exaggerated. 
but it is definitely not impossible to find a way to contact some lonely Afterglow AIs and control them manually one by one. However, Afterglow will never give Chan Ming the opportunity to contact Afterglow AI. And if Chan Ming has been restricted to these three factories and this planet, then there is no possibility of contacting Afterglow AI. So the first step for Chan Ming to realize his idea is to get out first. Even if it is not him, it is the same as just letting the iron or fly out. In Afterglow's territory, as a source of absolute danger to Afterglow, he must be able to take the first step to lay the foundation for his subsequent plans. Time passed. Night soon came. When Chen Ming looked up from the text on the terminal, he noticed that it was already 11 o'clock in the evening. In fact, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Hui Huang came to remind Chen Ming to get off work. But Chen Ming ignored it and continued to study Yu Hui's book. He has been in the factory until now. And just now, Chen Ming has finished studying all the professional books that Yu Hui has given him. Chen Ming did not rush to do anything else. He continued to sit on the chair in the factory and reviewed all the techniques he learned all day. After a round of review from beginning to end, Chen Ming can be said to have mastered these techniques thoroughly. Chen Ming moved his body, which had been stiff for a long time, and found Xiao Shur who was sleeping in the corner of the factory. He put on the protective clothing again and walked out of the factory. It was bright outside. Eleven o'clock in the evening on Earth time had nothing to do with this planet. Chen Ming could see the complete colony under the shining of the stars of the galaxy and the huge Earth core furnace power tower in operation and in the distance, the flat gray land with almost no undulations. The contrast between prosperity and silence, and the spaceships that never stopped passing in the sky, made Chen Ming feel the power of Yu Hui again. It was not easy to go back from such a place, and if he wanted to get something from Yu Hui, he might lose himself. But this could not change Chen Ming's mind. He did not want to live here and wait for death. And since he was here, it would be a waste if he did not try to take something away. Chen Ming returned to the iron ore. But he did not rush to rest in the living cabin, but sat on the chair in the captain's room and started the iron ore. Then, a communication request was sent immediately from Hui Huang. Yu Hui had been watching him. Chen Ming did not hesitate and directly connected the communication. Hui Huang immediately asked, Mr. Chun, what are you going to do? I've been in the factory for more than 10 hours a day. I want to go somewhere else. Please don't. Just now, several asteroids approached the colony. Although most of them have been destroyed, there are still a few asteroid fragments that are about to bombard this side of the planet. After leaving the colony, it may be attacked by subsequent asteroids. Is that so? Then I won't go. Chin Ming decisively said that he gave up this idea. Anyway, his action of starting the spacecraft was just a test of Yu Hui. Since he had tested Yu Hui's attitude and directly refused, limiting his range of activities to the factory, Chun Ming would not bite the bullet and say he wanted to go out. However, before hanging up the communication, Chun Ming still said intentionally or unintentionally, if there is a chance, I still want to relax a little. The living environment in the factory is indeed very good for people, but it is not enough for people to survive. I want a more comfortable environment, or some green vegetation. Hui Huang seemed to have triggered some key words and asked Chen Ming, Is this your request? I guess so. Got it. I will try my best to meet your needs. That's good. Oh, by the way, let me ask you something. Chen Ming seemed to have suddenly remembered something and asked Hui Huang, When is the specific time for your regular review? Is it based on the materials I have consumed, for example, when my monthly quota is used up, Will it be reviewed, or is it based on time? I saw that there seems to be no writing about this during the day. Huang Huang immediately gave Chun Ming an accurate answer. A fixed one month deadline for your study situation, there are three levels for inspection unqualified, qualified, and excellent. Qualified, the amount of materials allocated to you is the same as last month, and there will be corresponding additions and subtractions for excellent or unqualified. The detailed material allocation list is in the factory's main control computer. If you haven't learned about our material allocation rules from Gamma A, I can explain it to you now. Chen Ming refused. No, I have learned about it. I still need to ask you for materials, right? Yes, if you have any difficulties, 
please raise them in advance. Well, there is no problem for the time being. Okay, goodbye. Huang Hui decisively disconnected the communication, and Chen Ming breathed a sigh of relief while sitting in the captain's chair. It seems that Yu Hui does not have an accurate estimate of his learning efficiency. A month of inspection period is enough for Chan Ming to read all these dozen ebooks over and over again. However, Chan Ming will not tell it directly. At least he has to choose a suitable and appropriate time to say it. Now his situation is so delicate, he has to find a way to gain some benefits from this. Whether it is substantial benefits or other benefits, he has to try to fight for them. Moreover, Hui Huang did not say anything about restricting Chan Ming's range of action, which means there is still room for bargaining. So Chun Ming plans to work first, and cooperation is always mutual. Even if Chin Ming has already planned to stab Yu Hui, Yu Hui does not completely believe in Chun Ming's cooperation. But at least in the short term, it must be a situation of good for both of us. The next morning, at 8 o'clock on time, Chun Ming directly started the spacecraft again. Then he received another communication from Hui Huang. This time, Chun Ming said in advance without waiting for Hui Huang to speak, I need the assistance of the spaceship to use my ability. I need to drive the spaceship into the factory. Huang Huang paused for a little longer than the previous instant answer to Chen Ming's question and said, You continue. In addition, we have another request. This is the first time we see you use your ability. I hope to witness it with my own eyes. Yu Hui's words made Chun Ming feel something was wrong, but he did not refuse. He said, My ability is limited to the spaceship. I can only control things other than the spaceship on the spaceship. If you want to see it, you can only wait for me to move the things to the spaceship and then watch it through the spaceship's monitoring. If Chin Ming said this a while ago, it would be 100% true. But now it's different, it contains some of Chun Ming's thoughts. Because as of now, Yu Hui's AI core is just the only exception that Chun Ming can still control after leaving the spaceship. Hiding some key issues in the corners of some ordinary words may allow Yu Hui to ignore these issues in the future. Huei Huang's answer to this was very decisive. No problem, please connect the signal directly to the factory control panel so that we can see it. After Hui Huang finished speaking, he helped Chun Ming open the factory door directly. Chin Ming narrowed his eyes slightly and parked the iron or inside the factory smoothly. With the help of the equipment and robots in the work area, all the things needed for the work were sent to the storage cabin that Chen Ming had modified and could be directly connected to the outside. After these weapons that needed repair appeared inside the spacecraft, Chen Ming could directly see the repair materials required for different weapons on the repair panel. Chen Ming did a little calculation and quickly wrote a list at 1.5 times and sent it to Hui Huang. These are the materials needed to repair these things. There should be enough in the warehouse now, but it may not be the case later. These should not be counted as my own material ration consumption, right? No, we will regularly replenish the materials in the warehouse later. Please continue. Chin Ming nodded and connected the iron ore, whose authority was completely controlled by him, to the internal network of the factory. Then he continued to look at the panel and prepare to press the repair button. However, when he looked at these weapons, he suddenly noticed a problem. The weapons given by Yu Hui were basically all energy weapons, both medium and small, with small weapons accounting for the majority and very few live ammunition weapons. Combined with the books that Chen Ming spent a whole day to master yesterday, Chen Ming seemed to understand something. If these are the main medium and small weapons of Yu Hui, then Yu Hui actually has the same problem as Chen Ming before. The spacecraft's termination ability is insufficient. Although Chen Ming had seen the existence of energy weapons such as the Tachyon Lance with terrifying destructive power before, but the limitation of the Tachyon Lance itself as a large weapon determines that it can basically only be installed on ships above the cruiser level. As for armor penetration, Chen Ming thinks that even if there is an anti-particle energy plan module, the armor penetration may not be able to withstand the terrifying consumption of the Tachyon Lance. Chen Ming has personally experienced the effects of automatic pulse lasers and tachyon lance. Although one is experiencing and the other is being experienced, Chen Ming can see the difference in energy output between the two with the naked eye. The consumption of the tachyon lance is definitely far greater than that of the automatic pulse laser. 
Not to mention that the armor penetration is a model that has just appeared recently, Yue does not have the design of a spacecraft with large load-bearing points installed on this kind of destroyer. Yue's low-level ships such as destroyers and escorts are not very good in termination ability. That's why most of the technical books Yuhui gave yesterday were about weapons, especially weapon destructive power and weapon output power. Weaknesses need to be strengthened. They asked Chen Ming to learn this aspect first, and they probably had this consideration. So if we follow this line of thought, the remaining small part of the books Yuhui gave yesterday were basically about radiation systems and shields. Are Yu Hui's radiation and shields also weak? Chen Ming suddenly had some doubts because he remembered that Yu Hui's shields were very good. No, it seemed to be good compared to the military. But for the military ships, Chen Ming could only say that the shields were almost non-existent. And he always had a feeling that the military ships might be stronger if the shields were removed. Chen Ming shook his head and threw away his strange idea about the military ships. Since Yu Hui wanted Chen Ming to learn this aspect, it must be that Chen Ming needed to improve this aspect. Chen Ming's energy was limited, and it was impossible for him to learn the design of the entire Yu Hui spacecraft in a short time. Yu Hui must have arranged this matter in blocks and priorities. And the weak points determine the capabilities of a spacecraft, so Yu Hui must need to make up for the weaknesses the most. It should be true that the weapons and overall shields of Yu Hui's low level spacecraft are a bit weak. Chen Ming silently recorded these two points in his heart. Maybe it will be useful when fighting with Yu Hui in the future, or it can be used as a reference for fleet composition when he starts to build a fleet. Chen Ming quickly gathered the scattered thoughts in his mind. He began to repair the various weapons piled up in the storage compartment of the spacecraft. The materials in the warehouse next door began to melt, gathering into a large pool of mixed liquids of various colors, seeping into the iron ore, covering all the weapons in the storage compartment. Then, Without any logic, all the weapons that had already suffered a lot of damage were directly repaired to the level of brand new. Chen Ming is now very curious about what Yu Hui AI is thinking when watching this scene. However, he could only hear Hui Huang's calm words. Can you let me see the effect of your ability transformation? Chen Ming thought about it and agreed. It just so happened that the book on weapon technology he read yesterday had the technology to transform energy weapons. Chen Ming could directly choose a relatively simple and universal one called Extended Energy Conduction Track. As for the weapon to be transformed, Chen Ming chose to directly start with a very special weapon he had just found among a bunch of different models of weapons. A weapon called Antimatter Shockwave that launches restrained energy bombs. Seeing this name, Chen Ming thought it was a good thing. Because if Chen Ming remembered correctly, the death torpedo seemed to be made of antimatter touch the weapon while transforming it, so that Yu Hui would not continue to treat it as a normal weapon, so that it would be convenient for Chen Ming to keep the thing. The transformation also did not take Chen Ming much time. After a ball of metal liquid wrapped around the antimatter shockwave, the transformation was completed. There was no change on the outside, but there were some changes inside the weapon. Hui Huang was silent for a moment, knowing that it could not see anything directly through the shell of the weapon, so it said, Please place these weapons in the warehouse, and a special freight robot will come to transport them tomorrow. Chun Ming said shamelessly at this time, I want to keep one weapon for research and experiment. Which one? The one I just modified. Okay. Huang Huang gave Chun Ming a positive answer and immediately hung up the communication. Chen Ming was left alone in the factory to continue the rest of his work and study. And inside Hue Huang's Alpha AI core, a report was instantly written. Adaptability assessment, very high. Learning efficiency assessment, high. Risk assessment, no change. Capability verification, weapon maintenance, and modification capabilities have been preliminarily verified. The modification capability effect is roughly within expectations. The maintenance capability effect can replenish the consumed weapon bullets. The rest of the capabilities are subject to subsequent verification. In addition to these verifications of Chen Ming's capabilities, at the end, Hui Huang suddenly added another line to the report. Learning enthusiasm, very high. After Hui Huang disconnected the communication, Chen Ming, who stayed in the factory, took all the repaired weapons to the warehouse as Hui Huang requested. 
by the way, he confirmed that the escape pods were intact and there were no holes bitten by the small stones, so as to avoid waking up the people who were in hibernation. At the same time, all the remaining weapons that could not be placed on the iron or were also repaired. It took a total of 10 minutes. Then Chen Ming found that he had nothing to do in a short time. The learning task has been substantially completed, and the next step of the plan is to go out. However, Yu Hui had just rejected Chen Ming's idea of going out, and it was not good to mention it right after. So Chen Ming took the small weapon, the antimatter shockwave, and returned to the work area. When Chen Ming saw its name, he was already quite curious about the design of this small weapon. The effect of weapons made of antimatter should not be too bad. Anyway, let's take it apart and have a look. Let's see what the difference is compared with the death torpedo that Chen Ming also has, which is made of antimatter. Although Chen Ming had tried to scan the Reaper torpedo with the equipment of the repair factory before, there was no result. The materials of the Reaper torpedo can block external scanning, and there is a great risk of explosion if it is dismantled. It is no wonder that there are no imitations of the Reaper torpedo, which is decades old. Chun Ming can only rely on the materials displayed on the disassembly panel to confirm that the Reaper torpedo relies on nuclear materials and antimatter to achieve its terrifying power. That is why Chun Ming also has antimatter antimatter shockwaves. What is the effect? Relying on the factory's scanning equipment and Chun Ming's own knowledge of energy weapons. Chin Ming quickly determined the blueprint of the antimatter shockwave. Although there are still many technologies that Chin Ming does not understand, the overall effect of each component can still be seen. The antimatter used in the antimatter shockwave is not like the Reaper torpedo, which uses antimatter as a consumable, nor is it like the antiparticle energy intensification next door, which is used as an energy supply device. Instead, it is used as the emitter of energy weapons. The restrained energy bomb launched should have some antimatter properties. As for why it should be, it is because Chen Ming always feels that the design of this weapon seems to be strange. It is not because Chen Ming has modified it, but the design itself makes Chen Ming feel that something is wrong. However, no matter what is wrong, Chen Ming can still be sure that this weapon called antimatter shockwave is the result of Yu Hui's own design. After all, Chen Ming has never heard of any substantial application of antimatter on the human side. When he checked various documents and papers on spacecraft and weapon technology before, although there are indeed many papers on antimatter, but they are basically theories, very few, or there is no practical application at all. Wait, Chen Ming suddenly realized a problem. Logically speaking, if Yu Hui has already put the antimatter shockwave into actual combat, then the human side must have seized it, and the effect of this thing should have been deciphered long ago. There should have been relevant papers on the practical application of antimatter. It is not that Chen Ming has not seen it until today. Could this mean that this antimatter shockwave is probably Yu Hui's new weapon? Although Chen Ming didn't pay much attention to it during the repair just now, he vaguely remembered that the antimatter shockwave was damaged, which seemed to be inside. Could it be that an accident occurred during the test of the weapon and it was damaged? If this is true, it seems to explain why the weapon is not right. But are these test weapons given to him casually? Or is it antimatter? Chen Ming's mind was full of doubts. Wait, it seems that there is no problem. It's just like the projects that are not optimistic about the company will be cut off. Yu Hui may also be pessimistic about the actual performance of the antimatter shockwave. And since antimatter has been applied to weapons, Yu Hui may have already started to apply antimatter experiments in other industries or energy. It just happened that the progress in the weapon was not ideal, so the antimatter shock wave project was cut off. Of course, it may also be that Yu Hui has other antimatter weapons to develop, or Yu Hui feels that the application prospects of antimatter weapons are unreliable. But in short, this thing has come to Chen Ming's hands. Chen Ming thinks this guess is very likely. Otherwise, let's not talk about Hui Huang directly agreeing to Chen Ming's taking this thing. Let's say that Yu Hui and the others shouldn't have given this thing to Chen Ming to test its repair and modification capabilities in the first place. So the fact should be like this. The antimatter shockwave is the product of a failed weapon experiment that Yu Hui had done in the past or recently. It has no value, so it was thrown to Chen Ming to try to repair it, and it doesn't matter if it is randomly modified. 
Then Chen Ming had better not test and fire this wrong weapon. He had just randomly picked a modification to increase the power output. If it is damaged again, and the antimatter emitter happens to be damaged, then Chen Ming can't dismantle the Reaper torpedo to repair it. Although Yu Hui doesn't seem to care about such things, Chen Ming thinks this thing is still very valuable. And when considering its value, Chen Ming suddenly remembered something. It was the effect of changing weapons on his panel. Chen Ming hadn't changed the weapons for the iron or for a long time. The weapon that the iron or had been equipped with was the electromagnetic javelin that Chen Ming had obtained from the mechanical clan a long time ago. Although one of the reasons was that there were no suitable weapons and no battles that the iron or needed to experience in person. But the more important reason was that the replacement function was inherently inferior to maintenance and modification in terms of functionality. Except when the weapons needed to be replaced at the beginning of the spacecraft, or when the weapons were damaged and replaced quickly during combat, there was no place to use it. So Chen Ming often ignored it. However, before Chen Ming accidentally discovered that he could modify the spacecraft at a long distance and remove the materials on the spot, and after he got this antimatter shockwave today, Chen Ming suddenly thought of a possibility. If the Sentinel replaced the weapons and then unloaded the replaced weapons, Perhaps this experimental weapon developed with Yu Hui's technology could be sent back intact. Instead of just sending back the disassembled materials as before. The more Chun Ming thought about it, the more he felt that this was possible, and he might give it a try. However, when Chen Ming had this idea and was ready to put it into practice, Hui Huang's communication suddenly came again. Hui Huang was still as straightforward as it was every time it contacted Chen Ming and asked directly, Mr. Chun, do you need Gamma A to continue to be your contact? Chun Ming immediately realized Yu Hui's second attempt at this time. His answer was naturally correct. You have already dismantled Gamma A, and you haven't installed it back on the refraction. So you shouldn't ask Gamma A about this? Why ask me? Hui Huang immediately sounded very reasonable and said, Gamma A is the individual who guided you into Yu Hui, and it might be more appropriate for you to communicate with us indirectly through him. Chun Ming would definitely not fall for it, and said, Then I can only say that I respect its ideas. I understand. Hui Huang hung up the communication quite quickly again. Chen Ming did not continue what he just wanted to do, but immediately paid attention to Gamma A. Gamma A has completed the data migration and has become a beta-level AI core. It has not escaped Chun Ming's control. However, in order to avoid danger, Yu Hui obviously gave Gamma A only a temporary robot carrier. And it is exchanging information with Gamma A at high speed through the network. Chen Ming can only know so much. Due to the nature of Yu Hui itself, he cannot know which Yu Hui Gamma A is communicating with, and the content of the communication. Only through Gamma A's current temporary carrier can we see the appearance of the beta core that Gamma A casually connected to the robot. A cylindrical yellow and green mechanical core. Before we can see it for a few seconds, Gamma A was removed from the temporary carrier. Without energy supply, Gamma A can only go into hibernation. Chun Ming frowned slightly and continued to pay attention. After about a few minutes, Chen Ming suddenly found that Yu Hui installed Gamma A on the refraction. But it was not the refraction controlled by Chen Ming, but a new refraction. What shocked Chen Ming was that the new spaceship equipped with Gamma A like other spaceships that Chen Ming had controlled before, appeared in the list of spaceships he could control. At this time, there were two refractions on the list of controllable spaceships on his panel. Chen Ming was uncontrollably excited. This ability was definitely the most outrageous ability he had since he awakened his psychic power. And this ability is also likely to become the key to Chen Ming's future work with Yu Hui. However, he would not show any performance to the outside world and he would definitely not give any orders to Gamma A in a short period of time, in case Yu Hui found out about it. Chen Ming saw with his own eyes that refraction controlled by Gamma A left the planet, arrived in space, and left the galaxy with the Huayao class cruiser that was on good terms with Gamma A. This should be because Yu Hui handed Gamma A over to Huayao for supervision, so that even if Gamma A was still controlled by Chen Ming, it could be dealt with immediately. At the same time, Letting Gamma A leave could also effectively prevent Chun Ming from causing trouble through Gamma A on Yu Hui's colony planet. This is acceptable to Chen Ming, as he does not need Gamma A's help for the time being. 
And he also has Gamma B running around in Yu Hui's territory. If there is a problem, Chun Ming is not without other options. As long as Gamma A can regain Yu Hui's trust, Chun Ming's ability to allow the spaceship he controls to indirectly control Yu Hui's AI and the AI he controls to indirectly control new spaceships can continue to be hidden. If this ability can be brought into play, it will definitely cause great damage to Yu Hui's social structure, allowing Chen Ming to gain great benefits from it. Chen Ming turned his eyes away from Gamma A, who is still under a certain degree of supervision by Yu Hui. Although it is more than 8 o'clock in the morning, the remaining work in the factory has been completed at this time, before a new batch of weapons to be repaired or modified are delivered. Chen Ming is ready to continue to practice his previous idea. But since I want to contact Lao Wu again, in fact, there is another thing that Chen Ming wants to do together. Just ask Lao Wu to help him continue to complete the work of hunting pirate bounties. Of course, it is not about asking Old Wu to drive the boat out to fight. Chen Ming only needs Old Wu to help a little bit. Chen Ming was busy here, so it was best to start taking action elsewhere, otherwise it would be equivalent to losing his ability to remotely control the spacecraft. So Chin Ming's idea was to use the assets he had on hand to buy spaceships and organize a temporary fleet to go out and fight pirates with bounties on their heads. In the end, all you need to do is ask Lao Wu to pick it up for you. Anyway, based on Chin Ming's last experience, it can be determined that the identity of the person receiving the bounty is not important. He had been wearing a protective suit that could completely hide his identity throughout the entire process, and no one from the government said anything at all. It shouldn't be a big problem to just ask helpers to collect it by then. Of course, Chun Ming will also give Lao Wu some compensation for this matter. This idea serves two main purposes. The first one is obviously making money. Among Chun Ming's current goals, building a fleet requires a lot of money. Although the bounty is a bit unstable, under Chun Ming's current situation, it is still good to make extra money. The second purpose is somewhat explicit about other considerations. He wanted to test the composition of his fleet through a battle with pirates. What is the appropriate fleet ratio? What kind of ship is suitable for him to control personally? What support is needed for combat and logistics? All can be learned in actual combat. It is definitely unreliable to brain test what the fleet should look like in the end. Only in actual combat can we determine what is the most appropriate and realistic choice. As for whether the fleet could defeat the pirates, Chun Ming had no doubts. He has direct control over three ships. But before, he had only relied on two ships, a centurion and a fighter, to defeat a pirate fleet of ten ships and a bounty of twenty million. Chen Ming didn't believe he couldn't defeat the three ships. Moreover, Chun Ming also plans to choose some relatively simple to operate spacecraft as assistance. For example, a ship that fires a round of missiles and then starts reloading without having to do anything or a ship that, like the Centurion, goes up to resist damage and then turns on the damping stance and hangs up to wait for other ships to finish. As long as these two types of ships are in the fleet, the number of ships that Chin Ming can actually operate by himself should be doubled and then some. Otherwise, if he could only operate three spaceships, then Chin Ming would not have the need to test the composition of the fleet. Three ships can detect a ghost. On the contrary, if Chin Ming is multitasking like now, the fleet composition can still maintain good combat effectiveness. In the future, when Chen Ming has more drivers, the effect will definitely not be that bad, and it will most likely be even better. Moreover, Chen Ming's ability is not static, and the number of spacecraft he can control will definitely increase in the future. It just so happens that the fleet needs to be slowly built and expanded, just in time to cope with Chen Ming's situation. Killing two birds with one stone is nothing if not done. Chun Ming immediately contacted Lao Wu. Before Chun Ming spoke, Old Wu took the first step and said, Xiao Ming, the company has been contacting me recently and wants to find you. If you want something, it's best not to contact me less. Chun Ming was not surprised that the company would contact someone he knew. He said, It's okay. If you contact the company, you'll have to contact him. If you find him, you'll have to find him. I don't know whether he can come over. If it was so easy for Yu Hui to come here, they wouldn't have been able to develop here for so long. Why do you feel so happy that you can't come back? Chun Ming said in a helpless tone. 
The situation forces me to do this. Is it possible that I am crying and hoping that the company will come to rescue me? If the company's support had come earlier, I wouldn't be like this now, right? By the way, the company shouldn't be able to monitor me, but it should be able to monitor you. Lao Wu said with a quite indifferent look, I know, that's why I was thinking that you still contact me now. Since Chun Ming had already mentioned the possibility he just hinted at, and it didn't matter at all, Old Wu didn't say anything. Anyway, he had already reminded him when he came up, and there was nothing he could do if Chun Ming didn't listen. Chun Ming had obviously thought of this possibility before he started contacting him, and said, There must be a reason why I am contacting you now. Obviously, it is because there is something I need to let the company know. Chun Ming's current thoughts on the company are very simple. That is, we can cooperate to a certain extent, but we cannot completely trust each other. Chun Ming had some hope in the company before, but after what happened before, Chun Ming still felt that he could not completely trust others in anything. In the end, a person had to rely on himself, so he can do whatever the company likes, and if the company doesn't do it, he will do it himself. Chin Ming can accept them if they do it, but if it has a very big impact on his own arrangements, then Chen Ming would rather not need them. At present, it seems that if the company wants to interfere with Chen Ming, it will definitely need a cruiser fleet, not just one cruiser. So Chen Ming felt that he could just leave the situation in the company alone for the time being. Anyway, the company is anxious for Sky Steel, but he is not in a hurry, and Sky Steel is not his. Chin Ming didn't believe that the company could fight all the way to Yu Hui's colony in a few days to interfere with his plan and take him away. A cruiser fleet was mobilized from being organized to sailing for the final long distance to fighting with the Yu Hui fleet all the way to him. There are so many aspects, such as personnel, logistics, combat effectiveness guarantee, and overall command. No matter how efficient it is, it will take some time, right? When the company can really handle so many things and come to Chen Ming, then what he needs to do here should be almost the same. So Chen Ming simply told him his situation directly. There is at least one cruiser guarding me in Yu Hui now, plus the defense force of a galaxy. I feel that if there is only one cruiser, there is no need to come here. There is at least one industrial colony in the galaxy that occupies one-fifth of the planet. The model of the cruiser is brilliant and there may be a support from Glory. Old Wu stared at the terminal with some surprise and asked, Is that what you said? Well, you can't really think that it's fun for me to stay in Yuhui, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Chun Ming heard the embarrassment hidden in Old Wu's words and said, You. Ha, don't think too much. I just think you can get along anywhere with your situation, right? Chun Ming was a little speechless. Old Wu obviously meant that Chen Ming might be treated better in Yu Hui than in the company. Although it seems to be the case at present, words cannot be said casually. Old Wu also realized that what he said was wrong, and immediately changed the subject and said, So where are you now? If you don't mind, please tell me. Old Lu has helped me stop a lot of people, but there are still people who bother me. Yeah. Chen Ming responded, and through the sentinel, he marked the industrial colony planet located in the Yuhui territory of the unknown star field outside the Empire's territory on the galaxy map and sent it to Old Wu. Okay, although I came to you to contact the company, there is another thing. Come, let's talk privately. Chen Ming hung up the communication. What he said just now can be heard by the company, but he should hide the content of his thoughts that he will tell Old Wu later. After walking into the hatch opened by the Sentinel, Old Wu very consciously took out the battery of the terminal to prevent the company's people from continuing to monitor. And on the Sentinel, a spaceship that is completely controlled by Chen Ming, no one can bypass Chen Ming's control of the spaceship equipment and monitor the situation inside the spaceship. After Old Wu boarded the ship, he found a chair in the sentry's captain's room and sat down. He crossed his legs and looked at the control panel in front of him and asked, What's going on? Chen Ming's words were quickly displayed on the display screen of the control panel. I need you to help me purchase some supplies, some materials, and spacecraft, using my card and my money. Old Wu nodded directly and said, Okay, but what do you want to do? Build my own fleet. Ah, uh, I know it sounds a bit too much, and there are many problems, but I will always solve them, and there are people who will support me. Old Wu scratched his chin with some nostalgia in his eyes and said, 
Well, I don't really have much to advise you. I think you have only two ways to develop with your ability, doing scientific research and building a fleet. Whichever you choose is the way you want to go, and it's your money anyway, you will bear the final consequences of what you want to do. If you go bankrupt one day, we will be waiting for you to come back at any time. Old Lou also asked me to ask you how you are doing recently and said that the last balance has been deposited into your card. It's just that the higher-ups strictly forbid him to do that with you again, saying that it will damage the company's reputation, and we are not allowed to do it in this pirate space station. The boss's concern and old Wu's words made Chun Ming seem to feel something he had never felt before. It feels good. As for the refurbished weapons for sale, it was within Chun Ming's expectations. He also made a small profit of more than 40 million. So even if he couldn't do it anymore, he could still accept it. This kind of thing can't really be done for a long time. The factory codes of the weapons are all forged, and they will be discovered sooner or later. It's better to stop it early to avoid problems in the future. After explaining the usual things, Chun Ming and Lao Wu talked about business again. Chun Ming also directly stated his needs. I currently need about 10 escort level spacecraft to support supplies for about three months, not counting the crew. Not too much, Lao Wu. You can calculate it, right? You are looking down on me? Lao Wu said and directly listed a series of supplies needed by the spacecraft, including weapons and ammunition logistics supplies, fuel consumption, spacecraft maintenance, and other aspects of the material needs of the spacecraft. Chen Ming also had a rough estimate in his mind before asking the question, and he had no objection to the result of Lao Wu's calculation. There was only one small question that needed to be raised. Weapons and ammunition can be slightly modified. If some ammunition can be directly purchased from raw materials, some can be saved. Old Wu calculated again and nodded. Okay, I remember. What should I do after buying the supplies? Buy a spaceship? Yes, I need the storm class of Tachyon technology. After Chen Ming finished speaking, Old Wu waited for a few seconds, and seeing that Chun Ming had no intention of continuing, he asked, No more? No more. I think I can only afford a storm. I have less than 50 million in my own card now, and the card that the factory director opened for me has there are more than 40 million adding up to 90 million. Then I have two mules parked in the space station, right? I plan to sell one. After hearing this, Old Wu couldn't help but ask, who are you trying to cheat? Not cheating. I'll sell it seriously. I'll just pretend that I don't have this ship in the future. I won't deliberately get the spacecraft back. I just don't know if anyone will want this secondhand civilian ship. Old Wu touched his chin and said while thinking, mule class is okay a merchant ship, and there are militarized subsystems. The original price is more than 200 million, and it's also good to depreciate half of it. And your ability is not known to everyone. As long as you don't take the initiative to cheat others and expose your ability, it shouldn't be a problem to sell it. Well, anyway, buy the supplies first, pay the deposit for the rainstorm, and then sell the mule. The money should be enough. Pile the purchase supplies in the repair factory first. There should be room in the factory, right? When Lao Wu was on sentry duty just now, he obviously passed by the repair factory and said immediately, Of course there are. The batch of unknown things you took from Lao Wu last time are also piled in the repair factory. Anyway, our repair shop doesn't make money from the storefront. You can just pile it up. Who can object? After getting a positive answer, Chun Ming continued to ask with satisfaction, Okay. Then is there any problem with buying the storm? No problem. The storm of speed is a commodity. What can be wrong with a decent payment? Is the storm worth more than 170 million? And this ship, isn't it a little less? Don't you consider other ships? Didn't you say you want to build a fleet? Old Wu's doubts at this time are obviously not unreasonable. After all, the price of the storm is indeed more expensive among frigates. But in addition to its excellent drone control AI and the excellent radiation energy system that can perfectly adapt to energy weapons like other ships produced by speed technology, other aspects are not worth the price. And under normal circumstances, an ordinary military frigate costs about 30 to 50 million yuan without considering whether the buyer is qualified to drive the ship. One storm can match six proper military spaceships, 
such as military sentinels and expeditions. A centurion, which is more expensive, can also match three. The money used to buy the storm can be used to buy other frigates. In fact, the prototype of a small-scale fleet can be said to have come out all of a sudden. And you have to know that when Chen Ming was shopping in the black market before, the hammerhead he saw was only 130 million. At that time, he also saw a storm that could be sold for 170 million, which was really outrageous. Although the spaceships sold on the black market are definitely different from normal goods, the price may fluctuate compared to normal. For example, if Chen Ming remembers correctly, the hammerhead on the black market has additional specially modified load-bearing points and mounting points, which must have been circulated within the Shinda company to make money. Then the storm seems to have a special feature, saying that it has more advanced drone AI intelligence. So the price will naturally be higher than that of ordinary spaceships. But no matter what, the value of the heavy rain itself is there, and it will definitely cost 150 million. But Chen Ming thinks that for him, the heavy rain should be worth this price. With the help of Chen Ming's ability, the Terminator drone squadron carried by the heavy rain can definitely play a terrifying effect. Even in a one-on-one -on -one battle, it will be stronger than the hammerhead of a destroyer. This thing is worth the price for me. In addition to this reason, there is another reason. Chun Ming continued, I want you to ask the company for me. When we fought with the military before, there should have been two destroyers surviving in the company's fleet, and I have already controlled them. I want to ask how the company plans to deal with it. Chen Ming's ability has determined that all the spaceships he has touched will be an unstable time bomb for others, and it is absolutely impossible to continue using them as before. So if the company wants to deal with the spaceships, Chen Ming may be able to get these ships at a relatively low price. Then his problem of buying the storm class can be solved here. Anyway, the company is unlikely to take the initiative to conflict with Chen Ming now, so Chen Ming might as well go over and ask for it with a thick face. After hearing what Chen Ming said, Old Wu seemed to suddenly remember something and said, That's your plan. Okay, the company mentioned it to me when they came to me. As long as you can go back, all the spaceships you have controlled, even if they are destroyed, as long as they are barely worth repairing, they will be repaired and all given to you at once, including the armor piercing ship. Chen Ming frowned slightly, repeated Old Wu's words, and asked, As long as I can go back? Well, they said that no matter how you go back, as long as you go back, go back to the company, and personally contact people who can count to a certain extent in the company, such as Lao Lu or the station master, then it counts as going back. It's not that easy. In the end, it depends on their efficiency. Chen Ming said casually, and suddenly seemed to realize something. The meaning of the company's words seemed to be that there were other people who wanted to get him back. Wait a minute, Old Wu, tell me. Now besides the company and the military, how many forces already know me? Old Wu did not answer, but asked with some surprise, Why are you asking me this? Because I feel you know. Chin Ming said it was a feeling, but the actual reason. When he went to the Glasses who sold intelligence last time, he saw the familiarity between Old Wu and Glasses when they exchanged pirate intelligence content. It was definitely not something that could be mixed up by drinking frequently. Old Wu blinked his glasses and said, How can you be so smart? Then I'll be frank. Apart from the company and the Star Region military, there are currently three big ones who know about your psychic situation, the 14th Legion, the local Star Region government, and Tachyon Technology. The small ones don't need to be taken care of. Basically, they are well informed but have no combat power. But there is one thing to pay attention to. The Illumination Research Institute seems to be a pure scientific research company funded by Ludswidging. They have been eyeing you since the last incident. It is simply blasphemy every moment to be able to kill you. They will definitely not miss any chance to kill psychics who follow their doctrine of high technology is harmful to people. The 14th Legion and the Star Region government have clearly stated that they want you. The attitude of the Star Region military is not clear yet and there is a certain division within them. It seems that it is because they are basically under the direct jurisdiction of the higher level war zone. Some people in the war zone want to kill you, but some people want to protect you. It can only be said that your psychic power has really become a hot commodity. Chin Ming knew that it was certain that his ability would be exposed, 
but Chun Ming did not expect that other forces would have ideas about him so quickly. Even if they have ideas, they will definitely or probably react slower than the company. But even if they are slow, when there are too many people, Yuhui's star region will probably be in complete chaos. It is not certain whether Chen Ming will find a way to go back by himself, or be taken back by a certain force, or even be killed here directly. But Chen Ming has nothing to worry about. There are still a few people who want to kill him, and other forces that want him will protect him to a certain extent. And if the arrangements he was making could be carried out step by step, he would not be afraid of anyone who wanted to kill him. Chen Ming remembered everything that Lao Wu said, and continued to think about the topic in his mind. Although Chen Ming felt that if the company's ships could really be returned to the company, they should be able to be obtained. But returning to the company itself was the biggest trouble. After thinking about it, Chen Ming still felt that forget it. It didn't matter if the company's spaceships were not in his hands. At most, he would continue to save money to buy spaceships. In his current situation, making money is not difficult. And Chen Ming is now planning to find pirates. The ships of pirates with bounties must at least be equipped with military subsystems. Chen Ming collected some and sold them. It should not be a problem to sell three or four ships in exchange for a proper military ship. As long as Chen Ming has the ability to ensure that the fleet's ships are not destroyed, he only needs to consume some materials for repairs, and sooner or later he can support the fleet by fighting. Chen Ming paused his thoughts on the fleet and said to Old Wu, Thank you, Old Wu. Old Wu waved his hands, as if Chen Ming had seen through what he was doing, and leaned back in his chair in a somewhat decadent manner, half paralyzed on the chair. What do you do after you buy the ship? Go out and fight pirates. Old Wu was stunned for a moment, then he straightened up and asked in disbelief, You don't want me to go, do you? No, I'll do it. That's good. But wait, can you remotely control the ship? I mean the new ship? No, but I can do it indirectly through other means. The fact that Chen Ming could directly control the new ship if the AI core he controlled changed the ship that he just discovered could be put to good use. After Chen Ming let Gamma be moved freely, it took on some tasks issued by Yu Hui internally and was busy upgrading to the beta level. When the rainstorm level arrives, it should be almost at the beta level and can be idle. When the time comes, Chen Ming can ask Gamma B to come back and install it on Chen Ming's ship to indirectly control the ship. Of course, Gamma B has to go back to Yu Hui after controlling it, because it has more important things to do. So when Gamma B returned to the pirate space station alone, I need your help, Old Wu. It's come to this, just don't let me really fight. Well, no, I just need you to help me collect the bounty after the fight, and I will reimburse you for the travel expenses. Hearing this, Old Wu was a little suspicious and asked, You really don't want me to fight? Really not. Really? Really? Chun Ming repeatedly assured Old Wu that he would not let him do anything dangerous before he got Old Wu's consent. After finishing this topic, Chun Ming brought up a new topic. In addition, there is a test of the effect of my ability. I plan to try it now. I need your help. Oh. Old Wu suddenly cheered up and said, are there new functions again? It seems that you have made more progress in Yuhui than in the space station. I usually see that you basically don't use your ability much. Chun Ming was stunned and found that it seemed to be as Old Wu said. The opportunities and times he had to demonstrate his abilities in the space station seemed to be less than the two days he had been here with Yuhui. It seemed that when he was in a safe place, he would unconsciously become lazy or relaxed, decadent, but when he was in a dangerous place, if he didn't make progress and didn't find ways to improve and expand his abilities, it would be no different from waiting to die. It was just like before on Reimu. At that time, Chen Ming would desperately think about the limits of his newly awakened spiritual power under various conditions. But after arriving at the space station, without the direct and dangerous external environment forcing him, he subconsciously relaxed a little. Chen Ming realized this but there was nothing to say. He was the only one who knew this situation, and he was the only one who could change it. Chin Ming said with emotion and explanation, a bad environment will force people to move forward. Then he changed the subject and said, let's not talk about this. I want to see if I can really get this thing back. Old Wu stood up from his chair and asked, how to do it? Wait a moment. 
Chen Ming took a little time to move the antimatter shock wave back to the iron ore. Then he opened the panel of the sentinel and began to replace the weapon. The antimatter shock wave gradually melted like the material used in Chen Ming's previous experiment and disappeared in his palm. Then, it appeared on the bearing point of the sentinel level station in the pirate space station repair factory. It's done. Chen Ming immediately dismantled the intermediate antimatter wave and a ball of metallic liquid quickly condensed into its original appearance in front of Lao Wu. Lao Wu half squatted on the ground, looking at the somewhat thick antimatter shock wave in front of him and asked, What is this? Antimatter shock wave, Yu Hui's technology. Antimatter? Yes, antimatter. I don't understand, but I'm big. Stop, don't talk nonsense, give this thing to the factory director, he should be able to help me deal with it. Old Wu gestured with his hand. His thin body seemed unable to withstand the thick antimatter shock wave. Besides the company, many people should be paying attention to Chen Ming's current situation. If Old Wu carried it like this, he might have a problem. So after a brief discussion, in order to prevent the information about the things Chen Ming brought back from being monitored, Old Wu ran directly to the management bureau building in person. Under tighter security than before, he quickly ran to the factory director's office with his familiar face and ID card. He broke in without knocking. The chairman was in contact with others at this time. Seeing old Wu come in, he just waved his hand to signal him to wait for a while. At the same time, he continued to say to the person on the other end of the call, What are you doing? Old Wu sat down on the sofa next to him. Although he couldn't hear the voice on the other end, he could probably guess who it was from old Lu's attitude. The factory director obviously didn't have a good attitude towards the person on the other end of the call. He said very straightforwardly, I don't know, go ask old Wu, don't ask me. He hung up the call immediately, looked at old Wu and asked, What's the matter? Xiaomu brought back something. Xiaomu is back? No, he brought it back with his ability, saying it was something anti-dash. Stop, don't say anything, just take me there. Okay. The factory director immediately took two guards who had appeared in his office at some point and followed Old Wu to the maintenance plant. After seeming to feel a few eyes on him on the way, he successfully entered Chen Ming's sentry. At Old Wu's reminder, the factory director unplugged the terminal battery and saw the antimatter shockwave in the captain's room. The factory manager tentatively said, Xiao Ming? And Chen Ming displayed a sentence on the control panel again, I'm here. This thing is the antimatter shock wave I got from Yu Hui. Although my knowledge is not at this level, I can say that I am sure it is an antimatter shock wave, and it does have antimatter as a material and antimatter does play a role in it. The only problem is that this is a weapon used by Yu Hui for experiments, and this experimental weapon itself has certain problems and is considered a failure. But at least, its name is antimatter shock wave. I understand. The factory manager took a deep breath, frowned, and dialed back the previous communication. There is something I need to bring back to you. Take it to the research institute that the company has recently established. It should be useful. One day later, Yuhui Colony Factory. Chin Ming successfully sent the antimatter shockwave to the space station. Hui Huang didn't care about this. After all, it couldn't detect the situation inside the iron or without being discovered by Chun Ming. Today, when Chen Ming woke up and walked into the factory, he found that Yu Hui had taken away all the repaired weapons while he was resting last night, and some new things were delivered. There were three in total, including a large live ammunition weapon, a pile of materials, including the materials that Chen Ming reported yesterday. Although Yu Hui seemed to be able to see how much Chen Ming had used in the warehouse, they were still delivered 1.5 times as much as Chen Ming said, and a ship that had Gamma A removed unmanned, and also loaded with the refractions of the first two. Brilliant communication also arrived in time. Mr. Chin, Gamma A chose to leave, and we decided to hand over the refraction he controlled to you. Does that mean I can use it at will? Even if I drive it to another place? Yes, but please note that this refraction is not equipped with Yu Hui individuals at this time, and there is no mark of our Yu Hui outside the planet, and it may be destroyed at any time. This can also be regarded as a threat from Yu Hui, but it still surprised Chun Ming. He thought that Chu Guang would be dismantled, 
and he planned to try to take the ship away when Chu Guang was dismantled. If it didn't work, forget it. Anyway, doing this is not a direct confrontation with Yu Hui. It would be best if it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. At worst, he can just dismantle it and take away all the materials. As a result, Yu Hui was so generous that Chun Ming really didn't expect it. But he should take it. As long as the ship is in hand, Chun Ming will always find a chance to take Chu Guang away. And there is a place for Chu Guang in Chen Ming's future fleet. The capture of valuable pirate spacecraft depends on Chu Guang's electromagnetic capture device. Otherwise, the success rate and efficiency of destroying the engine alone is still a bit low. Chen Ming accepted the batch of things given by Yu Hui. And then, unlike yesterday's task list, Hui Huang personally said to Chun Ming today, Today's task is to repair this weapon. Chen Ming waited for a while, but did not get Hui Huang's follow up words. That's all? Yes. Okay. Chen Ming was too lazy to move at this time. He directly selected this large live ammunition weapon, called the Infernal Cannon, through the refractive panel. Chen Ming simply looked at the panel. Or he could tell what this thing was without looking at the panel. Because the Infernal Cannon was a product of human technology, and it was a product that emerged very early in the process of human development. And in Chen Ming's impression, the shells of the Infernal Cannon should be... Chen Ming looked at the panel. He found that just as he thought, the reserve shells of the Infernal Cannon were all empty. Because its shells were all loaded with plasma-charged warheads. A plasma-charged warhead that can vaporize the target position with one shot and penetrate armor and structure with a high-temperature liquid metal jet is not something that is easy to produce. Chen Ming immediately understood what Yu Hui meant. Yu Hui wanted to use this weapon that uses special ammunition that is difficult to mass produce to test the effectiveness of Chen Ming's maintenance ability to replenish ammunition. In short, it is to test the upper limit of Chen Ming's ability. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe.